Guardians of Metal. I'm here with Jason from Symphony X. How's it going? Good, good. How are you doing? Very good. Um, can you tell me how you were to be the drummer for Symphony X? How you, how you sort of joined the band? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, man. It goes back to 94. I can't believe it's been that long already. Um, I met Romeo through, uh, actually, the first singer of Symphony X, Rod, was auditioning for my band at the time. And um, I had like a crazy fusion band thing going on. And uh, he said, oh, I have this incredible guitar player. And he's going to be putting a band together and, you know, and so on. And uh, sure enough, a few months later, my phone rang. It was Romeo. And uh, I, I had him send me some stuff, which was like, actually uh, ended up being, some of it is the dark chapter, like his demo stuff, which was, you know, him programming the drum machines and playing all the parts of everything else and all that. And right away, of course, I was blown away. And this guy's unbelievable, you know. And uh, yeah, so I just went down there and, and it was kind of one of those things, as soon as we jammed, we just kind of looked at each other like, you know, cool, <laughs> great, you know. Hit it off right away musically. And um, yeah, that was when the band was really just coming together. He had pretty much, he just received the offer from Japan for the first mm -hmm. video that we were gonna get. And uh, yeah, just you know, putting this band together to, to kind of finalize that and make that happen. And yeah, that's, uh, that was how we first met. Nice. Uh, were you auditioning other drummers at the time? Not really, I mean, he was looking. But mm -hmm. yeah, he, you know, Rob told him about me. And the same way he told uh, you know me about Romeo, and so yeah, we just kind of it was a natural thing, and it was uh, it's funny because everybody who came to the band at that time, like you know, we met Vanilla right at the same time. And it was just it was like pieces of a puzzle. It all just kind of came together. There was really no long audition process for anybody. It just kind of was like, mm -hmm. and within you know, from the time I met them in June '94, you know, until what December is when that first record came out. Mm -hmm. So we really just spit it out, kind of did everything we could just to make it happen. Mm -hmm. They were rushing us to get the, the record out. And so like, well, we need to do that so that we can make sure we can make another one and so on and so forth. And so. Um, so currently you're um, on the road with Iced Earth and uh, Warbringer. Um, and you're sharing the coal lining acts through you know, the different cities. Uh, who decides like which cities to coal line? Is that through the labels um, or? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of a range. You know, in the beginning, I think the managers sat down to, for the most part. We're pretty much just alternating, but we obviously wanted it to be, you know, in the sweet spots for each band. So, uh, you know, our hometowns, of course, we were kind of headlining those or playing second, rather. And like a lot of the Canadian shows, you know, even though it is mostly just flip-flopping, it's, it's set up in that way. So where we think it makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to split them up in LA a little bit so that we each play last for one of those. You know, we have LA and Anaheim. So we'll kind of split those up into two in a row, headlining, or playing first or second. But other than that, it's just alternating. You know, really. um, so you guys did a, a Western uh, Canada swing. You did Edmonton, Calgary. You hit Vancouver. You're in Seattle tonight. So how has been the uh, fan reaction so far? Great. I mean, we've had. It's, it's Knock on wood, so far so good. Um, yeah, I mean that was our first trip ever to Western Yeah, first Canada, time, right? right? So yeah, it was. Uh, you know, you don't know really what to expect, and uh, obviously, I, I Earth's been there quite a few times, so they have a really good fan base there. So it was cool, you know. The shows had, were at, you know, people were in the rooms, and uh, the response was great. Other than being pretty cold up there, it was it was a great time. And I know I'm being a wuss for saying that because it was actually unseasonably warm, and I'm like, God bless all those. Hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Iconic Class was released early last year. Um, what has been the fan response to the new album? Um, it's been overall, it's been really good. I think the album seems to suit our fans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people who already were fans more than the, the new listener right away. At least the new listener seems to kind of just sit back and have to absorb it for a little longer. It's a bit of a different direction for you guys, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, a little, a little heavier. heavier. I mean, it's kind of. To me, it's the natural progression of Paradise Lost. You know, mm -hmm. just kind of that's what happened next, and it was yeah, a little more, a little heavier, a little even more riff-driven, and, and that kind of thing. That's what it was about. From my my perspective, was I just want to make the thing groove as much as possible. You know, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Again, I think a lot of the fans who've been with us for a while are, really love it, and um, I mean, it, knock on wood, it's outselling you know the last record and what. So I mean, it's it's doing all right. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Um, but it seems. 
there's, I don't know, maybe there's just a little bit more of a digestion period for people to really kind of get it. As far as live and stuff, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is always the case with the record, but yeah, that seems to be what's going on. And when we bust into the older stuff, everybody's kind of you know, going crazy for that too. So yeah. it's keep, interesting. Keep the fans happy. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Try to mix it up. It's, you can't keep everybody happy. Yeah, and, and obviously the packaging helped, you know, sort of sell the album. Like it's just amazing what you know the art and yeah, and right. what was included. So absolutely um, it's important these days with everything being digital you know it's yeah a lot of people do still want a physical package or something mm -hmm. that's cool so we try to make something that's yeah a little bit special mm -hmm. and can be enjoyable to sit there you know like that old that whole thing is lost from when it was lps back yeah. then, you know, forever ago but when you sit down and really look at everything and have stuff to yeah. look at or you know information and stuff yeah you know? yeah um, I'm sure you've been asked this uh, probably a million times, but are you guys planning on doing any live DVD or CD yeah, in the near I mean, future? Absolutely. Uh, the reason it hasn't been done yet is because we really want to do something special and kind of spectacular on some scale, you know. Uh, location having a lot to do with it and timing, of course. So we really are trying to hopefully do it this year. Mm -hmm. It's definitely on the radar. We know We know we need to do it. And uh, yeah, we really do, but again, it's just about putting the right thing out. So at this point, after waiting all this time, we know that it's even more reason that it has to kind of be special. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely uh, definitely on the map, and yeah, hopefully we can get that done this year. Um, so before each live show, do you have some sort of ritual or um, sort of you know practice that you do before each show? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, I always warm up. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Real minimum would be 15 minutes just to get the blood flowing in the muscles, but usually at least a half hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just do basic exercises. It's more about, like I said, just actually making sure the blood is in the muscles. Then I'm warmed up and ready to go. That's the most important thing. I mean, you know, you ha your practicing needs to be done before you get on the road. You know what I mean? If you're trying to practice, practice, you know, while you're here, then you're kind of like in trouble. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, your your drumming style has changed a bit too, right? compared to like your earlier stuff? Well, yeah, I mean, it's evolved, you know, I'm always yeah. still trying to get better and whatnot. I think mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little looser than I've probably ever been at this point. And Maybe more aggressive? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah, at the same time, definitely. A little bit harder, right, because, you know, kind of classes, a bit of a heavier yeah. album. Yeah, fits in with the record. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, again, it's, it's part of the, just the uh, natural kind of course of things. Have you ever thought to go like double bass on the drums or? I still prefer the single bass yeah. for the, the tonality of it. Mm -hmm. And my setup's pretty tight, you know, so I don't like that that kind of feeling. And I really don't like the sound of the different drums and it takes forever to tune, you know, two drums, mm -hmm. get them close and all that. So I'm just, I'm really used to that. I actually, um, on my new setup, which I'm using for, uh, which will be on my DVD and when I do some clinics and stuff like that, and probably on the next tour, actually I'm starting to use another bass drum, mm -hmm. but it's also on a double pedal. So it's a different mm -hmm. size bass drum for different some different tones, but that's off, offset a little bit. And also, yeah, with the double mm -hmm. pedal, so I'm still, I'm still staying with the double pedal thing. Um, can you tell me um, some of your influences when, when you were growing up, you know, to become a drummer? Uh, you know, who you sort of looked at as, you know, I want to be like he or she one day? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, the first guy that jumps out, of course, for me was Alex Van Halen. Because mm -hmm. uh, it was about, let's see, it was right around 84, 1984, and I was really getting into the drums and everything. So, mm -hmm. uh, although it was Fair Warning, was really the first album I got me from him. Um, and then, of course, you know, all the typical stuff. You know, I grew up on Slayer and Maiden and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, a few years later, when I was, you know, probably 15, 16, was when I started discovering, like, all these fusion monsters, you know, mm -hmm. Dennis Chambers, and Nicole Yuda, Weckl, and Terry Bozio, and all those guys. So, you know, I love all that stuff. The, the fun to me is really you know, not being stuck in one thing and listening to everything and trying to, especially when I was younger, really shedding all the time. You know, you're trying to emulate, you know, this guy's doing, that guy's doing, and just, mm -hmm. you know, catch the, the feel, the different feels, and mm -hmm. besides all the, the dexterity issues that come up just the real the feel and you know different styles of music and all that and I've studied the Afro-Cuban stuff and everything so yeah I mean it's kind of all over the place really I will, that's been my you know the way I've always thought about it was the, the more I can reach out and you know touch and be touched by different styles of music the more I will have to offer no matter if I'm playing metal or fusion or jazz or whatever I'd say you know whatever I'm doing at the moment I'm just you know 
makes me more well-rounded. So, yeah, I think that's what, it should, what you know I attribute my style with the band to. You know. Do you have any advice for uh, drummers that want to get into metal? Uh, you know, that one the drummers in a metal band. Do you have any sort of advice for them? Well, I mean, yeah. So first of all, don't like I just said. Don't don't pigeon yourself. Don't pigeonhole yourself into just learning metal licks or thinking you're just going to have metal chops, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, listen to more stuff so you can bring more to the table. Of course, with metal, there's a lot of endurance, so you've got to, the obvious things are, you know, practice, you know, have a good teacher, make sure your form is correct. You know, with metal, you're, you're putting out so much energy that if you're not doing it where in a natural body motion, you're going to hurt yourself over time. So, you know, check your technique, you know, like I said, if you're not taking lessons, you know, maybe go find somebody who's a good teacher who's going to help you make sure you're doing it in the most the most natural way possible. Because uh, not only to avoid injury, but just for the flow of your playing in general, no matter what, it's really for any style, I think that's... Do you mind if we uh, we go and check your uh, setup? Yeah, no. Yeah? Let's go and see what Okay, let's do it. Alright, so here we are. The Beast. This is a uh, Tamo, all Bubinga shells in this kit. Uh, besides, I have a maple snare and I also have a Bubinga snare that I use with these. But uh, I'm absolutely in love with these shells. They have just tons of tone and still really sensitive. Just absolutely love them. Um, my setup is not the typical metal drummer setup as you see. Some different sizes here, some kind of smaller stuff. But it still sounds huge. That's what I love about the drums too. Um, got this nice gong. Bass back here, which is everybody's favorite thing pretty much. Um, Symbols are Sabian all around. Usually start with the Paragon crashes here. In this case, I'm using a metal crash, and I'll swap this out sometimes. There's a few different ones I like. HHX Power Ride. A few different Chinas here. That's an 18 Chinese. Um, I have over here a 15 China. And then this is a 12 mini Chinese as well. So some different effects, different uh, timbers, if you will. And then, of course, these are called choppers. Sound maybe only a drummer loves, I'm not really sure. And uh, finish off by the ozone crash back here. And then this is a vault crash. I switched this out between uh, saturation or fierce crash. I do a lot of riding on those. Nice and washy, but still a nice attack. Um, pick for a drumstick. And uh, Evan's drum heads all the way. And that pretty much sums it up. Any questions? No more questions, dude. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you.